<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we want to welcome you to Fall High Point Market and International Market Centers wants to welcome you to Insider Tips for the Best Photography for Your Marketing and Money with Stephen Carlish and Chad Dorsey. Um, this presentation is also in partnership with Alden Park Showroom which is there in High Point, and please make sure you visit them if you are planning to go to market this fall. If you would like more information on any of our upcoming webinars, you can go to imchighpointmarket.com. To introduce Stephen, Stephen has been published in Architectural Digest, Veranda, El Decor, House Beautiful, Rizzoli, to name a few. Um, he has consistently helped designers and brands elevate their marketing imagery, including ready-to-be-published, cover-worthy imagery in local, regional, and national publications for over 20 years. As a former architect student, Stephen learned how to see space in an orderly way. That education has been invaluable to his pursuit of photography interiors. Studying architecture and then photography grounded him in the visual arts world, naturally progressing to focusing on interiors. His goal with each photograph is to draw the viewer into the photograph to make them want to be in the scene. His specialty is manipulating light, creating unique compositions, leveraging expert styling, and settling the mood. Now he works with the top interior design firms in Texas and throughout the U.S. to help elevate their brand assets for coffee table books, editorial features, and visual archives. In 2020, he launched a limited edition photographic art series available on his website. Chad joins us today and he creates refined interiors that balance tailored style with the spirit of modern living. Trained as an architect, his approach to every space is characterized by a fluid relationship to the architecture where proportion, light, and scale are essential. Chad refers to his style and philosophy as relaxed luxury. The idea of living casually with things a person loves to touch and feel in a way that is approachable but not precious. Relaxed luxury is understated. Often quiet, it can go unnoticed, but the user with a discerning eye will appreciate the details and the soothing feeling. Relaxed luxury is achieved with custom furnishings, incorporating handcrafted details, meaningful objects, and a true sense of the people who live there. His studio is based in Dallas with an outpost in LA and offers a full range of design services. Chad has been featured in national publications, including Interiors Magazine, AD Pro, Traditional Homes, The D Pages, Room Magazine, as well as numerous local awards and public publications. Recently, he was named by 2020 for 2020 designers to watch by Sotheby's Home. And D Magazine also named him King of Design. This year, Chad launched a bespoke fireplace line, Strike, which is a line of fully customizable line of fireplaces with different stone selections. Inspired by small towns in California, Strike is a balance of beautiful forms combined with hand-selected blocks of, of solid stone. They are made to order and shipped in 8 to 10 weeks. Um, at this time, I'll let Stephen take it away and give us more tips on photography. All right. Thanks, Ken. Hey, Chad. Hey, Stephen. How are you doing? Um, Good. Okay. Well, hey, let's talk about photography. Um, we just finished a, uh, a bunch of photography at the Kips Bay Show House here in Dallas, and I'm going to be showing um, some photos of Chad's kitchen that he did as uh, his contribution to the, to the show house and uh, kind of explain a little bit about our process working together as a photographer and designer, which um, I think is is paramount to uh, success in this industry is, is having a relationship with um, other people in the creative side. So it could be your stylist and photographer, um, florist, whoever. So to start off with, um, just a couple, a couple of simple images um, and quotes that that I think are, are pretty, appropriate um, images everything which I had to look up and Andre Agassi I was surprised this was a Canon ad from the from the late 80s but um, it's true now more than ever images everything and you know creating images that are 
that are going to stop you in your tracks on online is um, is is what I look for as a photographer, and I see in Chad's work. Um, whoops, sorry. Uh, less is more. Uh, here's actually an image um, we created in Chad's um, studio of his a detail of uh, his fireplace mantle for the strike collection, and it's just a. And you'll see a full full image of this later, but this is just an example of how zooming in on a detail is going to be more impactful than than an overall shot sometimes. And uh, consistency is key. Uh, Tony Robbins, if you want to walk on fire, follow that guy. Um, this is actually Chad's house in Dallas that that we photographed um, a year ago or so, and um, just wanted to emphasize with a shot like this that it truly represents. Chad's aesthetic as a as a designer and um, we'll get to some more of this photo later. Um, okay, so why do we photograph our work? Um, as most of you are aware, we are photographing it for our website, social media, editorial submissions, awards, client presentations, archives, and future book projects. Um, every time that we collaborate on a photo shoot, we're always thinking of are we gonna hit all these targets with the images that we're creating? Um, we really wanna be goal specific. And Chad, uh, you know, as far as when we get together to photograph your projects or you have other people photograph your projects, I know you're always thinking about all of these elements and the usage of your images. So you're always thinking ahead and of the images that you're creating. Um, they're all equally important. Um, you should always be thinking ahead for, you know, a book project that you could potentially be doing five or 10 years in the future. Um, your website is current. Social media is the most immediate need. Editorial is going to get you all that press, you know, awards, client presentations, everything. Um, you have anything to add to that, Chad? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing that's really important is to tell my story and I'm telling my story with my imagery and that's ultimately why I'm getting hired because of the story I'm telling um, from my projects and I just the initial thing is developing a website that has uh, that tells my story best and a collection of maybe five projects can do that if it's done correctly with photography um, and you know social media takes that one step further so that one image um, that's really powerful if I have one image that's really powerful it can capture a whole audience and that could be my brand just based on one image that dining room shot for instance that you did everyone knows that shot has been reposted over and over and over and technically um, I could only have that one particular shot and build a whole business off of one image um, going forward and sort of adding to it based on things that you and I did with that shot mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and that, that kind of, we'll talk about this a little later, but, you know, that just goes along with the whole process of when you are shooting a project is to take the time to shoot it right. We shot your dining room, I think, two or three different ways, and there was something really striking about the table element as a, as a feature. Um, we stripped the chairs away and only had two chairs, um, if I can go back to it you know, we just left it clean with two chairs instead of having a full table set. Um, it's just more about how you live, um, you know, in your home in Dallas. So it's, it's, and it's, it's more balanced, it's more visually appealing, it's not busy with a bunch of chairs, and it just works. So um, let's see, where do we go next? So assemble your dream team. This is probably, I think, the most important part of the process. If you are a new designer, um, just getting started, documenting your projects is to reach out and find the, the key people that you're gonna align yourself with um, for years and years to come. And Chad and I have actually known each other for maybe 15 years um, when he was first getting started in Dallas and I was first getting started as an interior photographer. And we've kind of grown together as, as um, professionals in our fields and are working together more now than, than ever, which is great. Um, but finding the right photographer for your brand, um, no matter where you live, you just have to do your research um, to find the right photographer. And that could be through Instagram, reading magazines, uh, starting to follow photographers that represent the style that, you, that you try and, you're trying to capture for yourself. Um, a lot of people ask me that don't live in, I'm in Dallas, Texas, I don't live in Dallas, Texas, where do I find a photographer? And, you know, we, we all travel. Um, I shoot all over the country, travel's cheap. Um, it's really easy to bring people in 
if you like a photographer from New York or LA or Oklahoma, um, reach out to them and, and bring them in. Um, a lot of photographers will drive or fly love the trip, love to travel, and uh, we'll come to you. It's not a, not a huge expense. Um, do you need a stylist? Yes. And I think, Chad, you know, we talk about this all the time, but um, I think along with, with a great photographer, you, you're not going to get the images that you really, really want if you don't have a partner who's a stylist contributing to the scene and to the whole look of your project. And I know Chad uses... Um, a stylist here in Dallas, Jenny O'Connor, and she is, I, I don't think he could do a shoot without Jenny's help. What do you think? No, absolutely. I, I say it's a waste of my money, actually, to do the, do the uh, session without hiring Jenny, because um, I may have the perfect project where we've selected all the perfect furniture and accessories and everything, um, but I still need something extra for the shot, because the a uh, project actually photographs a little bit different than you actually experience it in person. Your eye doesn't take in the entire space. It takes in this vignette. So why not allow a person to come in and, and merge some of the pieces together, help create that perfect shot. And we're all still working together. It's still my vision for the space. I'm communicating with Jenny and Steven on everything. Uh, but that's basically how we achieve uh, the look and the perfect sort of image uh, to put out there to, to an audience that is my vision. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of uh, designers when they're getting started will just reach out to a photographer, send them an address and say, you know, go, go shoot this house for me. Um, assuming that the photographer is going to do all the styling work. And there are some photographers who are talented enough to be a photographer slash stylist. Um, something's got to give though. And when you do find somebody like that, um, it's tricky because you have to kind of turn off part of your brain to do the other part. Um, I see things as a, as an artist in a scene and we'll move things around and, and contribute in that sense. But a stylist is actually going to bring product, bring props, um, floral, other elements to, to the shoot that I would never even consider. It's not, not something that's in my bag of tricks. So I think yeah. finding a stylist is, is critical to the success of your brand. In many cases, it's a business opportunity for designers as well. So you um, typically, it's a project that your homeowner may live in already. You have a day or two to do the shoot. You, they probably wouldn't be so happy if you did a week shoot at their house. Um, but like the stylist can bring in product too that may even take the space to another level. And many times my clients end up buying those accessories that we bring in for the shoot um, because they look great. They just add another layer to the space. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been on a shoot where the, the homeowner doesn't purchase like half of the stuff the stylist has brought right. in. It's, it's a good opportunity for them to see it presented in that way. Um, stick to your vision. Consistency is key. Um, that goes along with building that right team that you're going to keep using over and over again. So finding the photographer that is aligned with you visually, uh, stylistically, um, do your research on, on Instagram, see what they're posting. Make sure you find somebody who's uh, got, got the same look, the vision that you're looking for. We... We all shoot things a little differently and process things a little differently. Some people use lighting, some people don't use lighting, some people are bright, some people are dark, some people are punchy, some people are desaturated. So find somebody that fits what you're looking for um, and then start there. And then you got to build a relationship. There may be somebody that you end up liking their style, but you don't like the personality and you're back to square one because, um, you know, personality is key too. So um, and over time, you will start to find the right people that you can consistently use that are going to give you the results that, that are going to set you apart. Um, I totally agree with that, too. It's just, um, it really is about personality. Um, they need to like your work, I feel like. Um, that, that helps. And then you need to like their work as a photographer, but then also just the whole connection. There's a chemistry at the photo shoot between all the, all the people there. And those, that chemistry actually helps produce the, the best shots. Yeah, and we all we all want to be excited while you know while we're there. We want to be excited to be there. And um, every time Chad calls, I get really excited about seeing what he's created and and photographing the projects. It's always something that stands out to me, and is always something that I know I'm going to get something great for my portfolio as well. And we're probably going to get published if we do everything the right way. Um, let's see. Let's move on. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Hire a team, or it's not worth it. Um, Chad, so you said this to me yesterday, and I, I love it. Um, and there you are in your in your studio in Dallas with uh, your 
fireplace mantle behind you, expertly styled and arranged by uh, Jenny, the styles we're talking about. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about this shoot, but um, this just goes to show you um, the team is everything. So keys to a successful shoot. And this is just kind of some basics that, that I like to kind of roll through really quickly. Um, scout with a photographer. So whenever you have a project to shoot, you really should consider scouting or pre-scouting the, the shoot with the photographer. If the photographer doesn't live local, um, you know, can't see the house, the project, um, send them iPhone pics, um, be as proactive as possible, um, as early as possible with the shoot, just so you can start a communication with them. You can review the um, selects with a stylist and your team to determine what stays and what goes. Um, and what I mean by that is when I shoot um, a scouting um, session for a client, I'll walk through a house and shoot all the potential angles of a, of a, uh, of a room and we will decide on which one, two or three um, shots that we're going to attempt. And that way the stylist can actually see what is going to be in the photograph. Um, okay, we're not going to see that side of the room. I don't have to worry about styling that side of the room or we're only going to see this part of the desk. You know, let's focus on that. Where are we going to put floral? Where are we going to put props? What do we need to bring? Do we need to bring chairs? All that kind of stuff. Um, so it's, it's critical that you do that in way in advance, um, two, three weeks in advance so that you can go shopping for any, any props. Um, create a schedule for the day and be realistic. And that kind of is something that I'll try to create with my scouting shots is I will create a flow through the day based on the light in the house and what I feel would be the easiest to start with and how we're going to end the day and um, make sure that we're not trying to do too much. I mean, you're not going to go into a home shoot and try to do 60 shots in a day. It's just not going to work. Not the way that we work. Um, a real estate photographer, maybe, but not um, when you're working with a stylist and you're trying to do intentional shots. You may get, I guess, Chad, what do we look for? Like 10 to 15 shots in a day, potentially? That's, yeah, that's aggressive, too. I think um, that's, that's a lot of work. That's a full day of work. Yeah. I usually tell people about 30 minutes per shot to get set up, analyze it, review it on the computer, start making styling changes and lighting changes and adjustments and things like that. And then you have to up and move to a different room. So, you know, 30 minutes to an hour per, per shot per room is usually um, kind of a realistic way to look at kind of how the pace that we, we try to keep throughout a day. And it's a long day. Um, you know, you need help. Bring people uh, to help you from your from your studio. If you don't have um, employees, bring a friend. Um, you know, it's it's. I've seen designers, and I know some are watching that have done this all themselves. They've styled it. They brought props. Their cars full of bags, and you know, they've they've worn themselves out before the shoot even starts. And then by two o'clock in the afternoon, they can't even move and they can't even think, and they're over it. So. Anything you can do to relieve that pressure off of yourself, bring in a stylist, bring in helpers, um, step back, review what's going on. And I tell people to art direct. So look over the photographer's shoulder, look at the computer screen, make decisions. Um, things will be a lot better for you in the long run. Um, use a shot list, style ahead of the photographer. And that's another thing with me creating a schedule for the day. If you have a team with you, they can actually pre-style certain elements of the next two or three shots down the road so that we can move quicker through the house. Um, music, coffee, and snacks. I always bring music. You want to have a kind of an upbeat. Um, you want some energy when you're shooting. I want some energy. That's my personality. So I feel like it makes the day a little bit easier. Um, you know, have people there that can run and get coffee, um, have snacks, have lunch delivered. Think ahead for lunch if it's going to be a long day. Um, bring it in. Uh, make sure homeowners are not home. No pets around or kids. I've had shoots get ruined in the past by, you know, three or four kids running through at, you know, three o'clock in the afternoon. We're still shooting and, you know, knocking into the gear and messing up a, a room that we're shooting and just making noise. And, you know, the parents are just like, when are you going to leave? And so yeah. you got to have that communication ahead of time. Um, I think that's critical too. Just um, not letting the homeowners go somewhere else and no kids because um, it's really disruptive. But then also um, you do change the setting a little bit and you make a mess. Um, and it's, it's really could be upsetting to a homeowner. So at the end of the day, shoot, we clean the whole house, we get it ready for them to come back. 
um, so that you know they feel like nothing has happened inside. But in reality, we've moved the room around just to get that perfect shot. Exactly. Um, and here is a image of uh, Chad's kitchen, prep kitchen in the uh, Kips Bay show house. Um, and this just kind of shows a little bit of Jenny's styling technique in here. Um, it's a beautiful kitchen. So if uh, you'll see a lot of it on this slideshow. Um, here's another view of that kitchen, um, just to kind of show different angles that we'll get of a room um, and the placement of things like that. Um, and here's two more views of the kitchen. And I think like that bottom right, the right side image has just been shared a million times now. Um, but uh, I mean, I don't know how, we were in there about two hours shooting this kitchen and we got a ton of different vignettes and overall shots for, for this kitchen. Um, all right, so moving on, have a goal for your photos. Um, this is a cover, this is actually a shoot I did with a designer here in Dallas, um, Jean Liu. And um, it's now current October, 2020, it's the cover of House Beautiful. And I'm just illustrating this um, because we photographed this house last year and we weren't hired by the magazine. This was something that we shot on our own. And um, she had a great, Jenny didn't style this, but Harley was there doing the floral and um, Jean Liu is actually a great stylist. And so she had her team style the shoot. And anyway, if your goal is to get published, shoot the, for that publication in mind, hire a photographer and a stylist that have worked for that magazine before. Make it so good that they can drop it right into the next issue. And I think everything that we shoot as a team gets published somewhere, somehow. And if you work with a great stylist and you work with a talented photographer and a florist and everything is, is perfect and ready to go, um, when you're capturing a home, you're specifically thinking ahead, okay, what magazine is this gonna be great for? Who am I gonna pitch this to? Um, you're shooting it to just fit that magazine. And that's what they want to see right now. Magazines want you to submit your work that's ready to publish. They don't want to go back and have to reshoot it. They don't have the budgets right now. Um, it's harder to go back and shoot a house after you've shot it once. So get it right, nail it. Chances of getting published are huge um, right now. So start that now. Uh, shoot multiple versions of key rooms, um, style differently for future uses. And using that same kitchen oh, shop. That's a first. Sorry, what? You're freezing a little oh, bit. Oh, no, that's okay, go ahead. It was delayed. What did you say? You there? <laughs> no. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, all right. <laughs> we'll talk about it in a minute. <laughs> okay, so uh, anyway, here's an example of this kitchen, um, completely stripped down two different angles of this kitchen. And, you know, it's fully loaded on the right, um, heavily styled, heavily propped. Um, obviously it worked great for the magazine. They wanted to run it that way. Um, but there could be an, another magazine, another use for the image on the left. So that could be something that the builder or the architect would wanna show um, on their web website or in an ad. Um, anyway, so while you're there, try to get as many different versions of key rooms like kitchens, baths, uh, living rooms, um, outdoor spaces, anything that um, is special interest publication would want to pick up because uh, you start submitting images of those key rooms and your chances of getting picked up are, are, are key or huge. Um, here's a wide horizontal shot that could work as a as a spread. So, you know, hit every angle. There were also some tight details. I'm not going to share those at this time, but, um, you know, we had we had fun in this kitchen and um, single room scene content is super important right now. Um, this is actually a, a shoot we just did. Um, Chad, you can talk about this one. Um, this is like, a, what was the space in the house on the right? Yeah, it was just a, a sort of a guest suite. So they had a little kitchenette and the living space and then the bedroom is upstairs from this. And the homeowner during COVID decided that they wanted to convert this to a bar because it's adjacent to the family room. And so it was a really sort of a jewel box within the house. I had already done their house a couple of years ago. Um, so with this shoe, we were shooting this space and I was hoping to get some attention just from a few shots with just this space. It's kind of a special space. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's a really cool space. And um, so 
you know, we shot this space a couple different ways. Um, you know, we hit probably about six shots of this of this space, a couple of details and a couple of different angles. Um, but when you're shooting a single room and you're thinking about getting it published or even even for yourself, you know, play, play with the styling, um, change things up, shoot a couple different ways, uh, sell some product. Um, <laughs> that I think is goes along with what you said earlier for the homeowner to see things that are styled that they want to buy. Um, highlight other brands, use their right. social. I think in the next shot. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. In the next shot, you'll see um, an area that uh, we hadn't on that chaise. I brought that chaise in for the shoot because yeah. um, the piece of furniture had not been decided for that area. So I ended up bringing this in and the homeowner ended up liking it and we ended up going with it. So that's, that's another business opportunity for that. Yeah, that worked out great. And so I remember you had movers come in, movers brought that in and some other chairs um, that we tried in that space as well. And that's another thing that you have to think about if you want to bring furniture in to try for a shoot, um, think ahead and have movers bring things or to move the homeowner stuff out of the, out of the room as well. So right. the detail that, that runner that you had going up the stairs was pretty awesome. So that snake. Um, all right. So let's see about 1230. See styling advice pointers. Um, so I, I, I guess the bottom line is, you know, we really feel like I think styling is is crucial to creating great imagery. Um, so a lot of people probably have a ton of questions about styling, and um, you know, st stylists are hard to find. Um, usually, they're credited in all the images on in magazines. Um, you can usually find them. I credit my stylist whenever I work with stylists on the in on Instagram, and um, most people are are more out there. You, you can find more people that are stylists now than you could a couple years ago. So really, really look for a good stylist, but just some basics. If you can't, if you can't find a stylist right away is, you know, bring more props than you think you'll need. And I see people showing up with two SUVs full of boxes and bags. I mean, full, um, we'll fill a garage with props, um, art books, a lot of homeowners, um, they may not have enough, so you got to bring it all in. Um, use art from a local gallery or an artist to replace homeowners art or lack of art. And this is probably, I think I deal with this on every shoot, is um, art that is brought in specifically to replace what the homeowner has. Um, and if they're not there, you're not going to hurt their feelings, um, putting something different in the house. But don't feel like you can't shoot a room just because the art that's there isn't what you want. Um, we can Photoshop art away. I can Photoshop art in, whatever. There's a lot of ways to get around it. Um, I know, Chad, you align yourself with galleries and artists too all the time, right? Right. I mean, they're part of the experience. We have it in our studio, but then also we take it to our houses and um, just as much material as possible because you really don't always know what's going to work when it comes to styling and accessories. And that's the best way, I think, to get a client to buy a piece of art is just to bring it and stick right. it in. So, no one really wants to commit to something without having it in the space first. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, create, create the scene that you want. Um, I, I spoke with a designer recently, and she was asking questions about, um, she wanted to shoot a homeowner's, she wanted to shoot a house, but the homeowner had some furniture in the house that wasn't hers, that she's like, how do I get around these obstacles of the homeowner's um, furniture that I can't, that doesn't align with, with my brand? And it's just, you know, that goes down to, yeah, bringing people in to move the homeowner's furniture out of the way. Uh, create what you can, bring in, bring in your own furniture if they don't have it all and make, make the shots that you want. Um, the scouting images will help decide what stays and what goes. And then um, you can start thinking ahead as to, oh, what if I brought this other piece of furniture in just to complete this scene? And, you just have to you put the extra effort in to do that. Um, chairs, bar stools, rugs, huge. Um, I know rugs, rugs are a big deal. Can't have enough. Um, sometimes it's just a piece of a rug peeking into a shot. You don't have to lay out the whole thing. Uh, maybe it's just a, just a hint of it for color. Um, contrast, you know, bar stools. Homeowner has a set of bar stools you can't stand. I just bring one and I can Photoshop it in three or four times, make it look like you brought in a set of three or six or whatever it is. Chairs, same thing. Um, sometimes if it's a setup in a living room um, 
and you really want to have a set of matching chairs, just bring one. I can Photoshop it in two different areas. So it looks like they have two. Just things that can kind of help you out without having to go crazy thinking you have to over, over bring. Um, containers for floral. Um, if you work with a great stylist and a florist, they're going to have plenty to choose from, but that might be something that you start stocking up on if you don't already have. And throws, blankets, pillows, anything to layer a shot and bring in color. And we talked about this the other day. I think layering is, is so important right now. Um, you know, we were minimal for so long, but now, you know, the more, more is more. So I think what we'll do now is we, we typically almost over, over style a little bit and pull back as we shoot. Um, and price, price everything that you bring in, homeowner might want to keep. Um, I know some designers will actually create a, uh, a price list of all the items that they brought in, which, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but you could also just have a price on the bottom of the sticky note or make sure you have it labeled somehow that you know it's yours. Um, cleaning supplies, uh, broom for rugs. Um, that's kind of like a personal thing. I like to kind of sweep out my rugs, uh, make them perfect, check curtains, lampshades, and tangents. Um, lampshades are, uh, if the lampshade is off, it just kind of ruins the whole shot. So. Um, and that's kind of a photographer pet peeve. I think photographers are pretty good at picking that out. Um, curtains, all the all the little, little stuff is is critical for styling. Um, okay, back to Chad's studio. So Chad, tell us a little bit about these two shots. This is the same area. We shot two ways. And so the slide on the left was that is actually of my fireplace line. Um, and this slide on the left was existing conditions. It's with some, a few styling edits. Um, we brought in the chair, the leather chair that you see. We moved a few pieces of furniture away so you could actually see the fireplace. And then on the right, I wanted a more minimal approach. Um, and so we brought in a more minimal piece of art and then additional chair just for this shoot. So the great thing about this shoot was we did this in about a half a day. I've got two different images that technically to a user, they wouldn't recognize it as the same shot or the same location. And, and those are great for marketing and, and marketing my fireplaces. And we also got a couple of portraits of you in the space with both setups, um, right. looks and, and uh, you know, and this is just a good, goes to show you, um, I mean, this is, it's not a real fireplace. So Jenny was, Jenny O'Connor was styling this and, she just brought in some some chopped wood and it's on the floor. But I think at first glance, you don't really even notice that, but it kind of helps make it more real. Um, it kind of completes the scene. So, you know. And then actually on the right, you added a ceiling to that shot. And then on the left, it's got the open loft ceiling that I have in the space. So yeah. it gives it a different feel on the right. It's a little bit more refined. Um, and the one on the left, you can see the brick above the, the molding there. Yeah. So yeah, we tried to keep keep options open on that one, and you know we moved things around, took that screen out, moved chairs in, we took your sofa out, we took your coffee table out. I mean, we just really played with the scene, um, you know. And this is uh, yeah, jump into the shot for a quick portrait. Um, I'm really big on on doing designer portraits while I'm shooting a house, and I always try to recommend that the designer jump into this, um, take advantage of me being there and lighting up a room, um, getting great shots. So think ahead of a room that might work well for a portrait and um, just have wardrobe options ready. Um, or if you're just kind of a black t-shirt, black jeans kind of guy, you can just kind of stay. <laughs> with me. Um, keep it quick, do multiple locations if you can. Um, bring your team in, shoot your team. Um, I've actually done quick headshots of, of an entire office will they'll bring in their whole team they'll come in after lunch and i'll have a setup going for a living room shot for example and it's just like let me knock out the four or five people that are on their team you know keep it quick like 30 minutes 15 20 minutes um don't spend all day on it but it's a it's a great way to take advantage of why you're in in a in a location take advantage of it for a great background um i also think it's more relaxed as well so we're shooting it during while we're shooting the interiors you know you just jump in there it's 15 minutes, you're, you're done versus a whole afternoon set up for just portrait and more formal about it and I, I, much more energetic and uh, more personal to do it in the interior shop. Yeah, it kind of forces you to, forces you to be quicker. 
because you got other things to do. Um, yeah, there's a lot of pressure built up if you just spend a whole day around a portrait shoot. So you can kind of, you know, just be quick and be fast. And here's another example of your kitchen at Kips Bay. We were, we were shooting it and, you know, this, this was a great vignette on the left that we were focused on. And I was like, this would be a great opportunity for a portrait. Let's just move that chair out, put you in here. I pushed in tighter with the camera, nothing changed. Took five minutes to do. And, you know, you can use either image forever and um, you can never have enough portraits of yourself. Uh, let's see. We also did another portrait of a different, a different part of your kitchen as well. Um, this is something that I think a lot of designers aren't quite aware of is, is just recropping an image that, that you might have. If you're trying to refresh your website or you're trying to look for new content for Instagram or the web, um, the cameras that we use now are such high resolution that you can literally zoom in to almost any image so far that you're creating, you can create 10 images out of an image, um, if that makes sense. So taking this image as an example in Chad's house, you know, I could easily crop in for these two vignettes and he could easily share those on, on social. Even if the house was being run um, as an editorial feature, I don't think he's giving too much away by sharing something like this. Um, so it's something to consider. It's, it's, I had a designer talk to me recently that she redid her entire website um, based on this recommendation that she had hired a real estate photographer who photographed all of her projects and she wasn't super thrilled with the, the look of the images because they were just too wide um, and too busy. So I said, just go back in and start cropping them down. And she did, and she created a whole new website out of it. And she was really happy with what she had created based on that. So it's just something to keep in mind, um, just to get more kind of life out of an image that even, even out of a vertical image, you can crop a horizontal. So um, let's see. I don't know if you even do that. You, Chad, you probably don't even worry about that, <laughs> but it's there if you want to. I, have, I could. I do. I, I leave it to the experts, you know? Yeah. I think some photographers might get a little annoyed if you were cropping all their images, but um, have a discussion with them about it if you're going to do it. Sometimes they get a little upset. Um, but just remember, it's your shoot. So convey your style, not the homeowners. Um, you know, bring, bring your stuff in. Get them out of the house. It's your, it's your set. It's your place to play. It's, it's, it's your creation. You're, you're creating images of small little moments in their space. So... Just remember that you're not, don't worry about all the noise in the house and all the stuff that's there. It's just really focus in on what, what is yours. Um, move anything, replace anything, create your shots. Like we said, um, take advantage of the opportunity to create amazing images. Um, don't just document your work, like dream bigger, like really start to focus in on what I consider hero shots, which are shots that you know, you're gonna get a wide shot of a, of a living room, but is that really the hero shot of the, of the living room? What's the shot that's gonna live for ever on Instagram? What's the one that's gonna get passed around? What's the one that's gonna draw attention to the project? Maybe it's a little tight vignette in a corner. Um, kind of shared some examples of that earlier. And fall in love with the process. If it's not fun, hire a better team. And what I mean by that is just really, you gotta jive with everybody that's on the shoot with you. Um, if there's somebody you're not to get, you know, you're, you're having a bad, bad energy from somebody on a shoot, then don't use them again. Um, there's a lot of great photographers, a lot of great stylists out there, um, people to bring on set just to kind of help the creative process. And the more energy, good energy you have on a shoot, you're going to really amaze yourself with what you can create and, you know, help the photographer find the images that you want. You know, I mean, it's, we're all open to, um, suggestions, interpretations of, of things. And, you know, I, I, that's one of the things I love working with the stylists and good stylists is in the whole team collaboration process is sometimes I call it, you know, it's, it's, it's photography by committee, you know, we're all sort of zoned in on what we feel is important about an image and we call it kind of work it till it's perfect. Um, and Chad, you're, you're always a really good art director when we shoot together and, um, I mean, you trust us, which is great, but then you also give us input on, you know, definitely things you don't like about a shot if something's really bugging you. And that's, that's important to kind of relay that to the team. 
I think that's part of being comfortable with the team, honestly. Uh, when, you know, when you're comfortable with everyone, you, your conversation flows freely, really. And to me, the shoot is really kind of like celebration of the project. You've worked hard to get it to that point, and then you photograph it so you can document your success. And usually the homeowner is really excited that you're there, but it's just, if it's not right, the energy is not right, then that would kind of kill that. Exactly. Yeah, I think the energy is, is huge. Um, I've been on some shoots in the past that didn't have good vibe, good energy, and, and the images show, you know, it's like we all want to be happy to be there. So, um, you know, you want to walk away at the end of the shoot, at the end of the day, knowing that you got amazing images for yourself, like something you want to share that day. Um, if you don't get that kind of a feeling from a photo shoot, then it's just kind of a wasted opportunity, I think. Um, you need to keep searching to find somebody that's going to kind of give you that that feeling. Um, a connected stylist and a photographer will help you get published um, if your work is ready. And I think it's just kind of all goes down to like who you know and who does the stylist know? Who does the photographer know? Are they friends with an editor at a national magazine that you want to get published in? Um, you know, one way to kind of think about that if, if, you see somebody who's a stylist in a national magazine that you really want to be in, reach out to that stylist before you reach out to the editor, whatever, have a conversation with them, have them review your work, try to bring them in on a photo shoot if possible, get feedback from them about is your work ready for that publication? Um, how, what, are they, what do you need to get it ready for the publication? Is there something you can change about it? Maybe it's the photographer you're using, maybe you change the photographer and, and the next thing you know, um, your work is getting shown personally from that stylist to the editor and all of a sudden you're at the top of the list. So um, really think about the connections that you can create through other people in the industry, um, not only to get better work, but to get it published if you want to get published. Um, stay on trend, do the homework, um, spend time on Instagram, uh, look at people's websites, read all the magazines, like really make sure that you're creating the work that's gonna, that people want to see. Um, I mean, I change as a photographer, I change my style every, every few months, just a little bit. I'm tweaking it, uh, to kind of go along with what I'm seeing out there. I get excited about new, new styles as well. So, um, yeah, don't just randomly hire a photographer and send them an address and expect it to end up on the cover of a magazine. It just, it's never going to happen. Um, if that's your goal. Um, let's see, you will spend more money on styling props floral than you expect and it will all be worth it. And, and I think that's, I think a lot of people get scared with how much money they're going to spend on a photo shoot, but I, I think you spend more money shooting it wrong. Um, you're going to have to go back and reshoot it again. And I've reshot projects for designers. I can't tell you how many times because they've hired the wrong team or the wrong photographer and they just approached it kind of with a, um, lackadaisical attitude and they didn't plan and they didn't do all the steps involved to to make it a success so um we would never go into a shoot chad without you know discussing the project scouting the project having the stylist scout the project um a lot goes into it we don't just show it blind you right. know we know no, i agree and for me personally by not doing some of those things is a miss and I feel like then I missed part of the opportunity. And I really only have one opportunity to go and photograph it unless I come back to do it again. But if you can't afford those things, and I think ultimately setting up and planning all these things in advance, it will take time. But getting everything that Steven's talking about together ultimately will produce a more successful shoot with the photographer and allowing enough time to do the shoot because styling, setting up the floral, and then getting the photography all right is a lot of work for just one or two people. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like we talk about how many images we try to do in a day. Um, and you think about all the work that goes into it. It's, it's amazing how when you create a gallery on your website, for example, and you have six solid images, that's all anyone really needs to see. You know, you don't need to, to show them the whole house. You don't need to show them four angles of, of every room. Um, you know, so just create, create art with your photography. It's going to go a lot further with you. If you really slow down the process of creating images that are going to last, that are going to be more creative, you're going to enjoy more. Um, you just get a lot more use out of them. So shoot your projects early and once and never go back. So uh, let's see. 
uh, behind the scenes during photo shoots, maximize your BTS coverage. And this is something I'm kind of guilty of. I wish I did more. Um, there's actually a question that came in from George Lynch about candid shots with lighting setups. Um, Actually, George, I didn't include that in this, but I kind of talk a little bit about capturing behind the scenes. Um, I think it's really great to show people what you're working on and that you're actually working on a photo shoot. Everybody loves seeing behind the scenes um, videos, showing some lighting setups, showing the camera gear setup, showing the props all everywhere, showing people working on um, working on a shot, maybe showing a screen grab of um, the computer screen, showing an image of what, what you're capturing really kind of creates a buzz about the project. So it's another way to kind of get out there and share what's going on. And um, just the whole Kips Bay <laughs> show us shooting the last, the last week and a half, um, super evident. Uh, it was just crazy how many people were sharing what was happening. So I hope people were following along and saw a lot of that. I know, Chad, you're really big on videos, right? <laughs> I love videos. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I think it's important though, we should all, we should all really kind of do more. Um, let's see, kind of getting to the end of this, we can start answering some questions, but um, Jenny O'Connor is a Dallas stylist that we work with and her Instagram is here at Jenny O'Connor Studio. Uh, Hailey Wasson is a really talented florist that is here in Dallas that we work with on all of our shoots. And um, he unfortunately is not on social media, <laughs> but, if you hashtag his name, you can find a lot of his work on and a there. lot of his work. Hashtag it. Yeah. Or just look at uh, Chad's website or Instagram feed or, or mine or Jenny's and uh, you will see a lot of his work. But, um, you know, I, I, I can't think of doing a shoot without Hailey these days. I mean, it's just amazing what he brings to, to the table. Um, you know, finding somebody who is a really talented florist that can just whip up something on the spot for a shot is, um, it's amazing. And you know, he, he responds to each person and their style. Like he knows that I don't really like floral. Um, I don't like arrangements. So it's always something more sculptural and maybe it has berries or it has a few flowers, but he, he knows the direction I want to take it and he can read my mind when we get to the shoot. Yeah. And, uh, and, and create for what the camera is actually seeing. So it's, it's amazing to capture him and process, um, how an arrangement can change while he's on set watching it and changing it through each capture. Um, it's pretty, pretty amazing. I'm, I'm actually sharing this image on the screen because I, I, I just wanted to illustrate a point. Um, so having a stylist, so these, these shelves were bare <laughs> in this shot and, um, you know, Jenny did the whole thing. So there's, there's a beauty to it. Um, I think people often overlook coffee tables, um, bedroom shots, bathrooms, kitchens. Styling is so critical. Um, it just makes everything look right. And as a photographer, um, working with a talented stylist is, is the best for me as a photographer because I'm feeding off of their creativity and seeing things in a different way. So I think honestly, as a designer, um, it doesn't mean that you're a bad designer if you're not great at styling or you don't have time to style. Um, it's just an extra layer of uh, expertise that you have on your team. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So, um, okay, we can open up for questions now. So if anybody has any questions, just type them in. We have a couple already. George, um, let's see, any candid shots? None in this uh, setup, but I do post some to my Instagram occasionally and my stories. If you actually go to my... Instagram account and um, start looking through some of my um, archive stories. You'll you'll see a lot of stuff that I post from photo shoots and some tips and things like that. Uh, what type of camera gear would you recommend? Um, well, uh, that's <laughs> uh, that's that's a kind of a crazy question for this because uh, it could go a lot of different directions. Um, I would just say, uh, I mean, you can reach out to me personally, and I can I can direct you to a um, Good camera. Uh, where would you look for a good stylist? I think um, just looking through magazines and seeing who's credited with the work that you like, um, you'll start to find good stylists there. There's some agencies in different, in a lot of major cities, especially New York and LA and Dallas that actually represent um, commercial stylists. That's a good way to start as well. 
Um, let's see, Cheryl, what is the best way to Photoshop to get the yellow out of the photo without making the photo too blue, too red? Basically moving the undertones. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty technical. Um, that's a Photoshop question. Um, I don't really think I have time to kind of go into detail about Photoshop in here. So send me a private message, Cheryl, and I will see if I can answer that. Patricia, what kind of licensing use, user agreements should a designer expect to have with a photographer? That's a good question. Um, you know, uh, in other seminars that I've done, we have talked about usage agreements. Um, as a photographer, we have a standard usage agreement that we have with our designers that we shoot for. Um, it's usually a single use agreement that the designer can um, use the images for web, social, and um, editorial submissions and award submissions and things like that. Um, but anytime it's gonna be used in print or picked up by a magazine that they have to go through us. So we kind of control the output of that in terms of usage so that we're all kind of protected in the long run and people aren't sharing the images and using them in a way they should. Um, I hope that answers that question. And then how to handle copyright charging for subcontractors. Okay, yeah, so we do some cost sharing occasionally where, um, mm, let's see, so how to handle copyright charging for subcontractors using images on social media. Um, that's, so social media is a whole new thing. People can share images on social media and um, it's really difficult to kind of charge somebody to, to share something on social media. Now, if they're using it as an advertisement, for a product, then that's something they really should pay usage for to the photographer. Um, and that's where a copyright issue is sort of breached when, when somebody starts to take something um, or using for advertising, uh, same thing. So when I shoot for a designer, it's for that designer or for the builder or architect. And um, if somebody else wants to share that image, they can actually purchase a license to use it. I usually go through whoever hired me first and sort of make sure that everything's okay with them so that the new party that wants to use an image isn't going to um, ruin an opportunity to get published if they if they use the image too soon or if they use it as an advertisement in a, in a magazine for example where the designer is going to use it as an advertisement so you don't want them both using it at the same time same image kind of thing so just a lot of communication back and forth um, let's see, what kind of lighting equipment would you recommend? Natural looking lighting in a dark space. Um, you turn the lights off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I I'm obviously need to do a Photoshop class <laughs> or photo class. So, um, that'll be next. So sign up on my website and you will be notified as soon as I release a course and um, I will be posting more tips and things to my blog. Um, you can follow, let's see, Chad, you probably don't have any answers to those questions, do you? I don't, no. So, um, let's see, step-by-step -step technical side of photographic interiors. Um, okay, another technical question for me. Um, yeah, uh, send me a uh, sign up on my website if you want, or send me a note through Instagram um, or through my website, and I will be in touch with you. Um, photo class, all right, yeah, photo class, photo class. All right, Chad. Oh, here you go. Do you like your images to be more natural light or with flash? Only natural. <laughs> Only natural. And I mean, sometimes it's impossible, but I prefer natural. One time I shot a room that had no windows and uh, you, you were able to make it like daylight was there and I was shocked, but um, typically natural light only. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, natural light, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of natural light images are actually flash. Um, a lot of the images, I pretty much use flash on about 90% of my images. And I think the key is to use it so that it doesn't look like flash, that it looks more natural, but it kind of helps bring out textures and colors that the natural light might not be that good in a space. So you have to kind of figure out a way with flash, learn how to use flash to, to bring those elements out in a, in a photo. Um, so that's the tricky part about photography, I guess, is to try to make something look like something it's not or better than it actually is. Um, let's see, webinar step by step, yeah. So yeah, photographing interiors is is, is tricky. So 
that's a whole other web. That's 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 a ten part webinar series right there, um, which I'd love to do. So email me and I'll I'll be in touch. So let's see, Chad, do you have anything else to answer as far as um, this goes? I don't think so. <laughs> All right, we're about a, up on an hour or so. Uh, let's see, Kim, anything? Hi guys, um, there are a couple extra questions in the chat. Okay. Um, can you speak to your photography telling the story of a space and how that may be important for marketing? I don't know, Chad, what do you think? You, you wanna answer that? Um, I think that, you know, Lots of times uh, there's a shot that is a, is a beautiful space, but maybe it's not quite like you uh, envisioned it for the rest of your portfolio. So again, that goes into bringing in a styling objects and accents that actually change the space a bit and convey a mood. Like for instance, uh, mine's the relaxed luxury is my, my defining sort of brand image. And so bringing in objects that actually uh, make it feel more relaxed and that, that sort of goes a long way in telling a story. Yeah. Now let's see. Another, uh, any advice on subcontractors? Um, okay, so that's a good question. Um, it's tricky. So I guess having multiple vendors in on a shoot, if that's what you're talking about, so, um, or whoever the question was, there's a lot of ways to kind of split split fees on a photo shoot and you can split between a designer and architect, builder, whatever. Um, it's a good way to kind of drop the, um, the cost per, per vendor. But what I've kind of found in the, in the last few times that I've done this is that I have a really hard time servicing the needs of each vendor. Um, so it ends up being too much work or I don't get the work done that I really am good at. So I may get a little distracted by, oh, the architect wants a shot of this, but I really should be shooting this for the designer who's the original person who hired me. So I feel like you really kind of have to kind of, if you do have subcontractors involved, they need to be involved in the scouting process. And they need to kind of emphasize what shots they want to get out of a shoot. And that all needs to be scheduled at the same time um, that it can be in the shoot day. You can't just stop a shoot to go do an architectural shot or an exterior or whatever, just because the architect needs a few more shots. Um, I don't know. It's probably kind of a confusing answer, but I hope it helps. Now, let's see. Uh, I like this question. If you any, any advice on how to tactfully ask the homeowner not to be around? Um, just be honest, honestly, I tell them, Hey, this is very disruptive. Um, I actually say, you know, don't do any work for us, uh, coming. I think a lot of homeowners get stressed out and they feel like, Oh, they need to make their house like perfect. Everything needs to be like it was delivered to them. I'm like, no, don't worry about anything. We'll be here early and I'll take care of it all. You and go enjoy your day and we'll be done about six o'clock and just don't come home. Uh, it's not usually a problem. <laughs> And, you know, one thing I, I, I do want to point out, too, is if you can let them know the areas that you're not going to be shooting, I think it's helpful as well. So if there's like a, you know, a second floor playroom that the kids hang out in, if the kids need to come home at four o'clock after school or whatever, just tell them, just keep them up in the playroom. We're not shooting it or we'll be done upstairs, you know, before the afternoon. Um, keep them out of your hair as much as possible. Um, pets are the worst because you don't want a pet to get out. Um, I've had pets, I've had dogs bark the entire day. They were locked in a room. That was the worst. And you know, just want to make sure that, you know, if you need to put a, a dog in, you know, board them for the day, just pay for it. Just put them, put them up and, you know, send the homeowner off to a spa day or something. I don't know, whatever you have to do to just get them out of the house. Um, show them, you know, tell them to hide their valuables. Um, keep track. They can take photographs of their personal things that they might have left out. You don't ever want somebody coming back saying you stole something. Um, I've had that happen a couple of times. It's, it's embarrassing. Um, so you don't want, you don't want to take that, that risk. Um, and let's see what else. Uh, Chad, your work is beautiful. Yes. Beautiful work, Chad. <laughs> um, all right. Any more questions out there, Kim? I don't see anything. 
None that I see. Okay. All right. Well, um, let's see. Anything else you want to add, Chad, that I didn't stick in this keynote? That might be helpful for people. I think, I think you covered it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think, I think it was pretty, pretty informative. But again, if anybody has any specific questions, I love uh, to send me a DM on Instagram. I'll um, definitely be in touch with you and reply to whatever questions you might have. Um, pretty open with, with any kind of advice or, or photo knowledge that if you're, if you're trying to figure something out, just give me a buzz and I'll, I'll try to help you out if I can. And um, likewise, I'm happy to help too. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everybody. And uh, Kim, IMC Design, High Point Market, Alden Parks, Chad, everyone. This was fun. It was great. Thank you all.